tonight on Out and About. The babies can actually be seen in a makeshift nursery in our Shearer Animal Hospital and Conservation Center. Over 100 bands performing, nearly 300 musicians will be on our streets. And we're making it by hand. People come in here and they see us making it by hand and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know that's how it was made. It's not like going to a concert. And why? Because the concert is a once in a lifetime experience. Go out and about. We're super excited. Uh, every year on the third Saturday in September, we host Red Panda Day. It is an international celebration to learn all about these wonderful and endangered animals. Uh, so we are looking forward to, for this year, hosting once again on September 16th from 10 until 2 p.m. Uh, we're gonna be talking all about their adaptations, their conservation messaging, using the wonderful red pandas that we have here at the Science Center as the animal ambassadors that they are. During Red Panda Day, we will have uh, different kinds of activities as well as educational tables. So folks will have the chance to pick up a coloring sheet, uh, touch red panda fur, not on the red pandas themselves. In addition to learning how to walk like a red panda, looking at the different kinds of things that they eat, the biscuits, the bamboo that we feed them here on site. In addition to actually potentially purchasing uh, paintings made by our very own resident red pandas. All of the money that we are raising during the event goes towards our conservation efforts to help animals in their native habitat. So we're super excited to have folks bring home artwork done by our very own red pandas. We currently have six red pandas here at the Science Center, two adults, Ty and Usha, as well as their one-year-old offspring from last year, Ravi. He will be traveling to a new facility in the fall at some point, so folks should definitely stop by and see him before he travels. In addition to two cubs from this year, Azula and Zuko, and then we also are fostering a red panda cub, Miso, from another facility. So we have three cubs in total, two adults and one teenager. Miso is actually a different subspecies of red panda. So there are two different subspecies of red panda, Chinese red pandas and Himalayan red pandas. Our family grouping here is of the Chinese red panda variety. Miso is a Himalayan red panda, so she looks much lighter in the face and is smaller in stature, which is very typical of that subspecies. Red pandas do have a wonderful adaptation for their natural habitat. Uh, much like the giant pandas, though they are not related at all, they do have that pseudo thumb, which is a modified wrist bone that they use to grab the bamboo stalks to eat in that native habitat. So the adult red pandas that we have here at the Science Center are currently on exhibit in the Lower Revolution Ridge Zoo expansion. And the babies can actually be seen in a makeshift nursery in our Shearer Animal Hospital and Conservation Center. It's technically in the surgery window, but there is no surgery to be had, just three very cute red panda cubs. Right now, the panda cubs are being fed roughly 11.45 and three, but we are starting to introduce solid foods to them. So that is subject to change, but you can see them all day long. My favorite red panda fact is actually about their tails. So their tails are not only really good for balance because they are arboreal, they do spend the majority of their time in trees, but they also use them as a little blanket to keep themselves warm. They'll wrap their tails around them to kind of cozy up in those colder temperatures. So you can see all of our red pandas and learn more about what the Greensboro Science Center has to offer at greensboroscience.org. I always remember, you know, as a kid, my dad always saying, you know, it'd be nice to own your own business one day or, you know, open my own butcher shop. So that's kind of how we came about. We just decided to step out on a ledge and do it for ourselves. It's pretty cool. Uh, working with your son every day, you know, we, we have a pretty good relationship. Um, you know, my wife helps here on the weekends. My son's wife helps on the weekends. Uh, and, you know, we enjoy. We cut up and talk a little junk to each other. And, me and my dad, we know how to do everything. We learned the same way. Uh, I learned a lot from him uh, in my younger years as well. So we, we had the same objective. Pittsburgh, North Carolina is a ribeye town. People love ribeyes in Pittsburgh. Any kind of ribeye, no matter if it's a prime or a choice or whatever kind of ribeye, they love ribeyes in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. We carry a little produce. You know, we just, we try to carry 
your mainstays for grilling, and which would be baked potato, sweet potato. A lot of people have black stones and they want squash and zucchini and a little onion and that kind of stuff. So we carry all that. Just, you know, we're, we're not a grocery store, but we try to carry the mainstays. If you want to grab something quick and go home and throw it on the grill, we have it for you. The thing I like about working here the most would be the customer interaction. Like, I learn every day from different customers, like how do they cook this, or how are they smoking this product, and what spices are they using, and you know, like uh, it's, it's a great, you get to know a lot of people around here, meet a lot of people in the community, and, and learn how everybody else interacts with food. I got interested in making sausage. My dad, I used to watch them do it when I was younger. And they did it the old timey way, cranking it and all that good stuff. And that's kind of how I learned, you know, learned to do it and, and wanted to do it, had the will to do it. And we're making it by hand. People come in here and they see us making it by hand and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know that's how it was made. So, you know, that, that's the cool thing about it. And we get a lot of great feedback from the sausage and we ask for it as well. So we can always, you know, continue to make ourselves better. We're, we're very close to 64. We're very close to Jordan Lake, you know, so we, we actually get some lake traffic on, on Friday afternoons and Saturdays. A lot of people want to grill out. Uh, we do a lot of party stuff here, you know, get a lot of custom orders. Uh, we get, I had one lady come in here yesterday from Raleigh. I mean, you, we get some people that have seen us on, on Facebook or Instagram. They come check us out and give us a try. Please come on out to Oak Wind's Butcher Shop. Come see us. Uh, we'd be glad to cut you a piece of meat. We'd be glad to sell you a piece of meat. If you just want to come in and shoot the breeze and talk to us about me, we can do that too. Come on out and check us out here. Oakland's Butcher Shop here in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. If you want to find out a little bit more information or what products we offer, you can check us out on Facebook. It's Oakland's Butcher Shop. Oakland's underscore butcher underscore shop on Instagram. I think I'm blessed with being able to be here today in a community that values its orchestra, in a community that's vibrant, with an orchestra that's world-class, with an institution that is world-class. For me, music is an art, of course, and it's a very deep one. Most musicians understand this because they see that what we do has an impact on the audience. And sometimes that audience is audience that may be at an educational concert or an outdoor concert or at a subscription concert. So of course I think that music can make people's lives better. People today have sound systems and especially after the pandemic it became even more. Screens that are bigger than anything you can imagine, and their work that you know they can stream Beethoven 9 right at their home, and it can probably even be live. Yet, it's not like going to a concert, and why? Because the concert is a once in a lifetime experience. If I had to send one message, just one, okay, out there to the audiences, it's actually going to change your life for the better. And I invite everyone to just come and give us one chance. Here at Drive Shack Rally, we are getting ready for a fantastic fall and holiday season. Now it's time to book your corporate or social holiday event. If you book your holiday event by September 15th, you will receive a $100 gift card for every $1,000 spent. Book your event by November 1st and you will receive a 15% discount off of Bay Play for any future event. Everyone at Drive Shack is just so excited to get these holiday events booked, to get the season going, and see you here with your loved ones and friends, coworkers, and anybody you want to bring to just come and have a great time. For more information about our holiday events, please visit driveshack.com. That's kind of the beauty of custom furniture is to be able to make those kinds of changes. We have a three mile option, we have a one mile option. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month.
Welcome to Furnish. Really, the sense when people come into Furnish is to be inspired by what they see and then let us go from there. We've been in business since 2005. My husband and I actually purchased the business from my mom back in 2015. And we sat with it for about a year and decided to redo things. We wanted to kind of shake up the landscape of the furniture business in Raleigh. So we really wanted people when they came into the store to get a sense like it's an inspiration gallery. I have always loved, since I was a little kid, dealing with design and, and color and fabrics and textures. So this has really been a, a fantastic journey for me to take. I like to understand what it is about something that makes a customer feel at home. So whether that's a color they found in nature or something from a magazine or a Pinterest board, what, what is it that makes them feel at peace at, in their home? So drawing upon those kinds of things will help us understand what direction we want to go in for their design. We focus on made in America products here. We do a lot of work with Amish manufacturers, so all of our bedroom and dining is done by the Amish. And I know personally for myself, when I took over this business, I had a preconceived idea of what Amish furniture meant, and it's not that at all. They are incredibly modern, very fashion forward. I think people are most surprised with how many options there are with their furniture. Someone may walk in and see a sofa and assume that that's kind of what you see is what you get when in fact there may be 30 different sectional options for that piece, seven different cushion options for that piece, 12 different options for your wood finish, take off nail head, add nail head, change the feel of the cushions. That's kind of the beauty of custom furniture is to be able to make those kinds of changes. When you come into our design center, you'll find hundreds of fabrics, hundreds of leathers, wood species, rugs, paint chips, everything that you might need in order for us to help build your furniture. We have an entire wall of 800 fabrics, so we basically start there. We throw multiple fabrics onto the design center tables and just kind of work through um, what looks the best. Um, we'll drape the pieces as well. We also check out fabrics for a couple of days. They can take it into their space and see if that's something that really applies to their area and looks the way it did here. Texture is a huge thing. Um, we do a lot of really plush chenilles and velvets. I love jewel tones, animal prints. There's just so much fun fabric out there. And like I mentioned, it's so great to do it on an accent piece. We see a lot of rounded furniture now, um, swivels. We do a lot of swivel chairs, even kind of arched back um, sofas and sectionals. It just sort of gets a, a nice flow to the room. Um, it's real inviting. Um, and also with a swivel option, it's, just, it's a very conversational piece to get throughout the entertaining space. We just want to make the customer as, as happy as they can be and find exactly what the perfect pieces for their space. We are at 8724 Glenwood Avenue. Our website is FurnishNC.com. Come visit us at Furnish. We'll help you create the rooms you'll love to come home to. I'm David Brower, the Executive Director of Pinecone, the Piedmont Council of Traditional Music. We're the producer of IBMA Bluegrass Live, powered by PNC, happening September 29th and 30th, right here in downtown Raleigh. Over 100 bands performing, nearly 300 musicians will be on our streets, including Into the Fog, who are playing right now at the Lincoln Theater. Sit here with time just wasting away. Heaven line in the house is low now. Sitting here on a lawn, but this loneliness is a friend that I know it. Well. Keep on searching, trying to fake it through the day. Maybe someone will come and show me. Truth and lies of never any cycle of compromises. Never said that tomorrow's another day. Then tomorrow comes and the fans change the same. Peace is just a 
sorry you're right and you can bet yourself there is nothing that you can do but you keep on searching trying to make it through the night i can't tell what's wrong and what is right Take one last look at where I've been And I finally forgive all these sins Cause now I realize it made me who I am When I get to the end of my life I won't be worried about all this wasted time I'll just close my eyes slowly start to fall But I keep on searching Trying to find Don't miss IBMA Bluegrass Live powered by PNC in downtown Raleigh, September 29th and 30th. More information is at worldofbluegrass.org. Welcome to Wake Forest downtown, where quaint meets cool. When you visit Wake Forest, there's so much to do. You can start your day with a coffee and a walk through the farmer's market on Saturday mornings. You can have lunch at the tea room and enjoy some chicken salad on a croissant, or you can have one of our 100-year-old famous hot dogs at Shorty's. For evening, you can venture to Bodega, where you can have tapas and wine or rum. You can also have a local craft beer from one of our breweries. One of our unique features downtown is our rooftop bar at Unwind on White. There you can have a yoga class on the roof or you can enjoy a glass of wine on a Saturday night and overlook our historic downtown. Most people are surprised about our growth at Wake Forest. They remember the tea room, they remember some of the quaint stores, but when they come down here now, they're really surprised that we have a performing arts center, that we have so much nightlife from run clubs to music to trivia nights. Really, there's something to do every night in downtown. Wake Forest downtown is probably best known for its quality of life events. From Friday Night on White, which is a summer concert series, to our Lighting of Wake Forest that occurs the first Friday in December. We also have Wake Forest Cares Holiday Kickoff, which is Saturday, November 18th, and that is a chance for the community to come together, kick off the holiday season, and celebrate our Wake Forest Cares initiatives. At this event, we're excited to have the Carolina Hurricane Storm Tour join us this year. We also will have a community performance stage with local dance groups, bands, as well as roaming entertainment and other family-friendly activities. We have events that are unique to our community, like the memorial flag raising ceremonies that honor deceased veterans and their families. This started in 2014 and we just honored our 50th veteran. We also have Spirits of Wake Forest walking tours that help showcase our haunted history and historic nature. The Lighting of Wake Forest is always held on the first Friday of December at Centennial Plaza in front of Town Hall. This year, we will be lighting our 30-foot tree at approximately 6.15 p.m., and then Santa Claus will arrive shortly thereafter on a shiny red fire truck. Each spring, we offer a Forest Fest, which is a tribute to our community and just the heart and history of our community. We also do this in conjunction with our town's Arbor Day celebration and provide free seedlings to the public. 
In the spring, you can join us for our largest event of the year, Friday Night on White. This is our summer concert series that happens the second Friday of each month, April through September, where we have a band, food trucks, dessert trucks, sponsors, and so much more. We want you to come experience Wake Forest downtown and all that we have to offer. We really pride ourselves on our sense of community and belonging between our locally owned and operated businesses to our beautiful surroundings in our downtown. To learn more, please visit wakeforestnc.gov and search experience. Centerfest is a great fine arts festival that features visual artists from North Carolina, Triangle, and from all across the United States, and also features performing groups on five stages. We have fantastic food, lots and lots of kids' activities, kids' rides, and just a fun atmosphere for the whole family. Come join us for the Centerfest Arts Festival in downtown Durham on September 16th and 17th. Benson Mule Days is a four-day festival that takes place in Benson, North Carolina, the last weekend in September every year. So this year it'll be the 21st through the 24th. It is a celebration of all things mule. So there's a mule rodeo, there's a mule jumping contest, there are other mule events, there's a mule parade, and that's one of the largest parades in North Carolina. It'll be Saturday at 10 a.m. And then throughout the weekend there are also live music, craft vendors, there's food, and there's a lot going on in the town. So it's a really fun event. Come on out on Saturday, September 16th to the North Carolina Highway State Test Track and join us for the St. Jude Walk Run Triangle. We have a three mile option, we have a one mile option. The event is free to attend and so come out with your friends, family, company and learn more about St. Jude and support the incredible cause. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. This is a month that really shines light on pediatric cancer and the incredible work that St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is doing, not only in research, but also finding a cure. Hey everybody, it's the 35th year of the Walker Hope at the Angus Barn. Whether you're walking or climbing, running or dancing to the embers, you can help us reach new heights for mental illness research on Sunday, October 8th. Come on out with your family and friends to enjoy walk, run, and festival, great food, and to make a difference. 